situation in Afghanistan is obviously deeply concerning and risks instability, not just in the region, but globally, and undermines the legacy of British soldiers, of coalition troops, um, and of brave Afghanis over the last 20 years. Um, and you know, whilst the decision to withdraw was not Britain's decision alone, of course, um, we do have an obligation here, I think, to step up and lead and support the Afghan government. Just this morning, the Afghan government has asked for international support, um, an invitation to the international community. We must respond to that and respond urgently. We can't turn our back on Afghanistan, on the people of Afghanistan. And so what I want to see is our government stepping up and leading on this and calling for an urgent meeting of NATO um, and an urgent United Nations Security Council meeting. What we can't do is walk away. We can't turn our back. This invitation has now come in for support. Let's step up and lead on the international stage, set up that NATO meeting, set up the United Nations Security Council urgently. Should the UK be offering more support in terms of sending more troops, perhaps doing more in terms of humanitarian work, not just evacuating British personnel that are there at the moment? Well, there's obviously the evacuation um, exercise going on, and um, I hope that is carried out as quickly, as swiftly and as safely as possible. I think in terms of what comes next, this request has come in from the Afghan government this morning for assistance. Let's set up an urgent NATO meeting, an urgent UN Security Council meeting, and decide what the appropriate action is. But it can't be to walk away and to turn our backs. Mm -hmm. um, who's to blame for what's going on in Afghanistan right now? Well, I think that uh, the decision to withdraw um, is not the right decision, and the timing is certainly not right. And there appears to have been a miscalculation of the strength of the Taliban on, one, on the one side and the resilience of the Afghan troops and government um, on the other. Um, I think over the 20 years, there's been a failure to build the political settlement we needed. But now, uh, the urgent question is, what do we do in response to this, respond, this request this morning for international um, assistance and international response? Um, Britain needs to lead on that. The Prime Minister should lead on this. He talks about global Britain. This is um, a test of that. Um, let's convene the NATO meeting urgently and the United Nations Security Council urgently, um, and in that context, discuss what the appropriate next action is. But this is urgent. So the US President Joe Biden is wrong to withdraw all US troops from Afghanistan? I think the timing of it. Nobody wants troops in Afghanistan indefinitely. Of course they don't, um, US or British troops. But the timing of this, I think, is in question. Um, and um, the, I think, miscalculation of the strength of the Taliban and the resilience um, of the Afghan forces is something that we've got to address. We can't just say, um, well, the decision's been made, we walk away now. Um, let's convene urgently, lead on the international stage, um, and put in an appropriate response to the, to the request that's come this morning. Um when you look at what's gone on in Afghanistan over the past week, um, and we're hearing that the US believes that Kabul is going to fall to the Taliban in the next 30 days, it's hard not to come to the conclusion that the 20-year mission there, led by the US and with NATO forces, has been a complete failure. Well, look, um, over 20 years, uh, we should be very proud of what uh, the coalition forces have done and what British soldiers have done in Afghanistan. A number of them are paid um, with with their lives and their families obviously carry that with them. Um, so they have made a material and a very important difference. What we can't do now is let that all unravel to um, undermine the legacy of that 20 years by simply turning our backs, walking away. Um, let's respond. A significant development this morning, this request for international assistance. Let's respond appropriately, lead on the global stage um, on this and convene those meetings. Just finally on, on Afghanistan, um, you've called for lots of um, international meetings. Should MPs be recalled to Parliament at this stage? Well, whether we're recalled to Parliament is a matter for the government. Um, I think the pressing matter for the government at the moment is, have you got a response to this morning's um, request for assistance? Have you got a plan and a strategy? That's the more pressing issue than at the moment whether Parliament should be recalled. That's a matter um, for, obviously, the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and and 
I think to many in Afghanistan, it looks like the West is abandoning the country. Do you see it that way? We have obligations to Afghanistan. We made promises to Afghanistan. And we cannot walk away unless let this turn into a humanitarian crisis and probably a refugee crisis as well. Um, because, you know, there's a real risk now that international terrorism will take hold again in Afghanistan. So we can't walk away. We can't um, undermine the legacy of the last 20 years. There are families across the country who've lost um, loved ones in Afghanistan. Um, and uh, we should be proud of what they did, but not now just walk away and turn our backs. OK. Um, turning to the situation in Plymouth, yeah. do gun laws need to be strengthened in the UK? Well, it's a very good thing that there's an already investigation into how the perpetrator got a gun licence given back to him um, very recently. I think there are wider questions. How on earth did he get a gun licence in the first place? What background checks uh, were done? So I'm glad there's the um, investigation already into why the licence was returned. I do think there's wider questions here, um, and that could in, uh, involve a review of the gun licensing laws, because there are other questions here that urgently need to be addressed. I mean, the people will look at this and say, you know, there's a young man here living in a, uh, a town centre. Uh, how on earth did someone who is suffering from mental health problems uh, get his firearms licence renewed? How, why did he have a gun in the first place? Well, I think they're exactly the questions. Why did he have a gun licence in the first place? What were the background checks that were put in place? There's now a lot of stuff coming about, out about the perpetrator. A lot of that will have been in existence beforehand. So a good thing that the particular issue of the return of the licence is already being investigated. But I think there are wider questions here about the gun licensing laws that are going to have to be looked at. How on earth did this come about in the first place?